how has your dream evolved? Like what you were going to school for in college, is that what you are doing now today? Oh, no, not at all. And so my dream has evolved so many times in my life, you know, and that's one thing I always like people to know is like your career in your life, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So my dream probably has evolved every five years. Some of the things I wanted to do when I was a child, I gave up on, like I wanted to be a writer when I was a kid. Um, and then I thought, ah, that's too hard. And now I just published a book, so and now I am a writer. And so different things I'd wanted through my life, it's odd, they've all kind of come true. And every time I've accomplished one, I then start a new dream. So my life has been full of like lots of different dreams and like making a big dream circle and bringing lots of dreams in. Are you always amazed when you look back? I am. You know, it's crazy that you say that uh, because I have this uh, little habit of writing things down or making little mind maps about once a year and then I put them away. I'm not very like, let's write out strategies. I just write them. And then every now and then I'll go back and I'll find one and I'll be like, holy Toledo, like I literally have accomplished everything I put in that mind map. So I really am a big, I'm a really big um, fan of writing down your goals or your dreams somewhere. Uh, I think it sets some intention both in your subconscious and in the universe. And you know what? Science has shown that people who write goals down actually accomplish them. What's a time in your life when you saw this fork in your road and you're like, I'm gonna have to go this way or this way. How did you make that choice of what to do? You know, I've had many forks because I'm an old lady, right? I'm an old lady because you're going to have many forks. And uh, many of them been, have been career forks or they've been personal forks. I mean, I think one of the biggest forks was when I left Ohio. And I know you're a Buckeye too, yeah. right? And the whole leaving of Ohio was a, was a big fork because there had been some deaths in my family. And it would have been easier for me to stay home. Uh, but I really kind of thought like I did like the mental calculations when I do a fork. But then I really, I listened to my heart. I listened to my gut. And what is it that... Um, energizes me. Uh, what is it that seems the most interesting, unique, well learned from? And often the thing that scares me the most is what I'll go towards. Like when I was asked to write the book, I was like, Aah! you know, that's scary. And I thought, well, if that scares me, that must be a sign that that should what I should do next. How do you push past that fear, though? Oh, Lord, uh, it's hard. You, you know how you push past it, um, how I push past it? Uh, I break it down. So I don't think about, I think about the end game, but then I'm like, okay, what's the easiest thing I can do today to move towards that goal? And if you break things, if I break things down into smaller steps, I find it a lot easier. And I also, the other thing I've, I've done when I have scary things is I've asked other people how they've done it, you know, or I've researched. I actually do more researching than asking because I'm kind of an introvert, but I'll like look at almost everything has a model. Someone's done anything you want to do before, so I kind of look to see the path other people took. If you want to accomplish big things or things that are a stretch for you, it's going to involve some risk. Um, and so I think uh, one's ability to actually accurately assess risk and move forward in the face of it is really important. Um, I do think you need a realistic view of risk, uh, but I think um, if you're able to tolerate at this point in your life, and I think young people are, uh, then I think you need to always understand that risk is going to uh, be a part of any huge success. As is, by the way, hard work, people. Um, some people think like, oh, you have your own business. It must be really easy you to get to pick your own hours. Yeah, I do, but they're seven days a week hours, 12-hour <laughs> days, right? Uh, so I think, you know, taking risk and working hard. Uh, what's the best advice you've ever been oh, given? Oh, God. Um, I get a lot of advice. I think I think the best advice I've ever got was um, no is a part of yes. So if you want to get yeses about things that you're doing, whether you're selling, whether you're promoting, whether you're doing something different, you're going to hear a lot of no's. Don't let the no stop you because it's part of, it's the journey to getting to yes. Now I still have, I still struggle with that. I still get a no and I'm like, oh, you know, or I get bad feedback from a, a presentation or something. I'm like, oh, but every one of those no's, every one of those, you know, constructive feedback uh, pieces, if you embrace it, it gives you a path to the yes and to success. So. No is a part of yes. So the no is like a failure. You have to go through the failures. Yeah. But don't think of it as a failure. It's a mm -hmm. process, right? You're going to learn something from it because you're going to kiss. You know when they tell you when you're young, you have to kiss a lot of frogs to get to your prince? It's the same thing. Sometimes you have to test out what you want and what you're selling or giving or doing isn't going to be for everybody. But finding the no's helps you get to the yeses. What is something that you struggle with today and how do you work through it? How do you overcome it? Maybe it's the no's, getting a no. It's well, you know it is. It's me <laughs> saying no. Like that. Oh, really? <laughs> it's, it's, the so it's the opposite. Like that's so funny that I've never yeah. made that connection before. This is like therapy. Thank you. Um, 
I, you know, I tend to get so excited about helping people and doing things that I say yes to everything. Um, and that it can be quite challenging to one's schedule. Um, like I want to help everybody. Everyone wants to have coffee. They want to pick your brain. I want to say yes to this. A client doesn't have any money. That's okay. I'll do it for free. You know, before I know it, I have way too much on my plate. And so that's something I've really been struggling, struggling with the last couple of years is really being able to say no and not feel like I'm letting someone down. Um, and to maybe help them find another resource, but you know, I gotta spend some time with my family as well. So that's really hard for me to say no. How do you stay motivated? Well, I'm lucky because I am one of those like type A intrinsically motivated people, meaning that a day isn't worthwhile to me unless I can accomplish things, like unless I can like check things off my to-do list and that keeps me motivated. So I keep motivated by the, <coughs> the idea of making something happen, by creating a to-do list and checking things off and feeling like I've gotten something done. Like if I have a day where I like lie on the couch for a couple hours, mm. I feel so guilty. And my husband's like, honey, it's okay. It's okay to watch The Real Housewives for a couple <laughs> hours. It's okay. So I think that really helps me. Now, that said, I'm not always motivated to do the things that need to be done, <laughs> but I am always motivated to do something. So I, I'm really lucky like that. It's just kind of natural. What's one thing you would tell, speaking of Ohio, your younger self? I would say, tell my younger self, it's okay to ask for help. So I think that I went through a lot of my career life just barreling through, kind of on my own, forging my path, making things happen, working really hard. And I saw like asking for help as a vulnerability, as being weak. Well, if I ask them for help, they're going to think I'm stupid. If I ask them for help, they're going to think I'm incompetent, you know. And I realized that asking for help is actually an act of courage and that people want to help you. And people, if you ask people for help, uh, they will help you and then they'll become invested in your success as well. So that's the one thing I would tell my younger self. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Do not let your ego get in the way of asking for help. Asking for help is a great way to build relationships and to get other people invested in your success.